Hi and welcome to Conversations for a Better World. My name is Robin Walker. And you know, it wasn't that long ago, back in the 1850s, it took about four months for a letter to go from England to Australia, which by the way is where we're filming today, Sydney, Australia. And that letter that took four months was via a sailing ship because that was the only means of people communicating between those two countries. Fast forward to present time, and we have the most amazing technology. We can instantaneously communicate with anybody around this amazing world of ours. We can do it either through text messaging, through phones, or through Skype, where we can even see the person that we're talking to. However, along with this amazing technology, the one thing that we didn't get was a guidebook on how to be able to use it safely and mindfully. So our guest today, Alison Wilson. Alison Wilson has actually provided and just recently published two books as guides in how to use this amazing technology mindfully. Alison, welcome to the inaugural episode of Conversations for a Better World. And the first one even. <laughs> And definitely the first one even. So amazing. Two books. Two books. Two books. One's the what mm -hmm. and one is the why. So the first one, Hold the Phone, tells you what to do, how to best cope and best live with this technology so that you can use it whilst minimising the risks to your health. Yeah. And the second book, Hold the Phone, Here's Why, is the why book, which tells you why it's a really good idea to just make very simple changes to protect your health. Okay, excellent. Now, obviously we're going to be you know, going into to the, what, what it's all about. I believe though, you took something like seven years of research. I did. To yes. compile these. It took seven years. Yeah. A lot of that was research, a lot of that rewrite, was rewriting. Yeah. A lot of that was life intervening as it does. Yes, it, it definitely does. Stops you getting from A to B in the shortest period of time. And we all know about that one, don't we? But it's actually been really handy because in those intervening seven years, do the general public has found out a lot more about this technology. And I think most people nowadays have heard at least one or two things on radio or TV. Yeah. Letting them know, just alerting them, even if it's in the back of their mind, that there are some or potentially some health concerns with using this technology. And that's been brilliant because my books are, are positive. It's the good news. I'm just showing people what to do. Yep. So instead of focusing on the heavy stuff, the bad news, I wanted to focus on what to do. Yep, yep. So it's not doom and gloom. Yep. And obviously neither is this, this, um, this episode that we're filming with Alison today. It's about the good news because it is amazing technology. Now, um, the foreword in both of the books is by Dr. George Carlo. Yep. Can you just very briefly tell us who he is? He would be... Um, one of the, if not the foremost scientist who specialises in this area. He was in on the science at the very beginning. He's held, he conducted what is still the largest research study into this in the mm -hmm. early days. And he was the one who was uh, responsible in the very early days of bringing to the public's attention the fact that, hang on, there are some health sh potential health issues associated with using this technology. Yeah, okay. So just to establish the credential of um, George and also him, the reason why he did this foreword for you. Part of it is what he says here, which is what um, Alison was just referring to. My job was to run what remains the world's largest research effort into mobile phone dangers. Seven years, 56 separate studies, US government oversight, and 28.5 million in funding and that was back 1992 to 1999, and the funding came from the mobile phone industry itself. What's interesting that he goes on to talk about in the, um, in the foreword is that the conclusion, it was recommended to the government in the US and the global telecommunications industry because of what, um, what was discovered to um, empower consumers to make their own informed safety choices. Unfortunately, that did not happen. No. 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 So this and, and well, not only did it not happen then, really it continues to still not happen. Yeah. There's very little that the, the general public hear about this. Yeah. So, the, so as a general public, back in the late 90s, we did not, 
Yet again, there was no guidebook given. No. And that was an opportunity no. to give a guidebook. Yeah. Okay, and also, you know, a lot of people go, well, you know, there's not a lot of research there. Well, as George continues to say, he has a personal library containing more than 17,000 scientific papers. Yes. That's always one of my favourite lines when I listen to an article or on the TV or listen to a radio report, is when someone says, well, of course, there's no evidence. Yeah. Because that is just not so. Yeah. There, is, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of scientific studies that, are out there. that show that there is potentially an issue with this. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And we are seeing a bit of a, a drip effect coming into mainstream media now, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. Which, as you said, enabled your books to not be doom and gloom. Yeah. But and to tell the... I think it's important to stress that for a journalist, if a journalist is just asked to look in this, into this subject and they're just given a short period of time, it's impossible for them to do that. Because looking into this subject properly, you, it's not a short-term project. Mm -hmm. You have to immerse yourself in it to understand it. So it's very difficult for most journalists to actually be able to report on this accurately because you can't just dip your toe into the water. You have to really study it and understand the studies and learn who the real experts are. So it's difficult for journalists as well. So they're caught in a, almost between a rock and a hard place. They are. In giving informed information. Well, that's interesting you say that because George also talks about um, the, axi the axiom, knowledge is power, has particular, particular relevance here. And this is precisely why this knowledge conveyance book by Alison should be read by and remain on the bookshelf of every parent, sp spouse and friend of every person who uses mobile communication devices. He goes on to say that Alison has done what governments, scientists and industry have so far failed to do, and that is empower consumers to make their own informed safety choices yeah. about that's, wireless. Yep. That, that's the critical thing, is that there isn't enough information out there for people to make a choice about what they do, and it's, it's all about informed choice, so that people have the information from that point on, once people are informed, the choice they make is absolutely up to them and not everyone will make the same choice. But my point was I wanted people to have the ability to, to make a lucid, clear choice because they've got the information at their fingertips. Really, this book started because when I learnt about it myself mm -hmm. and I started trying to tell friends, it's such a complex subject that it's very difficult to cover with someone in five minutes. And also when you start talking to people about it, you can see the scales go down over their eyes because if they haven't heard anything about it, they're very, very, very skeptical, as I was in the beginning. So what I wanted to be able to do primarily with my friends was put something in their hands so to say, look, this is a resource, just look at this. Mm -hmm. It will give you all the information you want. It will give you the science. It will tell you who the experts are. It will give you the quotes from the experts. It will give you the resources that you can do your own research afterwards if you want to. And this is a complete how-to kit. And therefore, people can go away and read it in the quiet of their own homes without, some, without feeling that someone has got a vested or a personal interest in them getting this. Yeah, and that's really important. It, and particularly if, um, I often find that in partnerships one person has an understanding mm -hmm. and the other partner may be very sceptical. And of course that's very difficult within a partnership if someone's really keen on something to impress their information on someone else. This way you can do that dispassionately without having um, all that added extra pressure there. Well. Before we actually get into the content and the different aspects, what, what was it about your life journey that ended up in this? Um, I think the first step, as with a lot of people who are part of any discussion on health, mm -hmm. the first step was I got very, very sick. Mm -hmm. um, I got to the stage where I was sensitive or intolerant or allergic to almost everything. Um, foods, chemicals, just about everything. Uh, and then that progressed and I ended up with chronic fatigue and I was literally flat on my back, unable to function. Um, which when you're running your own business and have got two small kids is not brilliant really. Um, but I found that the issue was so complex that 
doctors, despite trying, weren't able to really help me, and specialists weren't able to help me. No one was able to tell me the cause, and no one was able to show me the way out of it. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do is just go to a break, yes. and then come back and just find out more of that, yeah. which leads into the effects that this does, does have on our health. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll come back to it.